Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is December 8th, 2019. Hey, where's that button? Where'd it go? Greetings, there it is. Friends. It's so good to see you there, chat room. How's it going? Welcome back to the live stream. We're going to say hello to Tagaron. Sean is here. Lennon BR with the resub. Thank you so much for that early resub. Five other folks in chat got emotes thanks to twitch's haha -ha holidays very cool to see that <coughs> excuse me rambling geek good afternoon frankus hello hello dev man nl good to see you there we go I'm, I'm reading them before they're popping up on the screen look at that all right um so i've got my captain marvel hat on today um a, a friend of mine on twitter captain marvel news i've been following them and talking to them for a long time today's I think the five-year anniversary of that Twitter account. It is amazing. So I want to make sure I, I wear my Captain Marvel hat for them. Um, how's it going, going Eternal Dev Coder? And Janesco is here as well. Hello, hello. Um, notice they've changed this, a couple of the icons. The, uh, the partner badge has changed, and so has the VIP badge. The VIP badge looks a little bit more magenta and less purple. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. I'm back home. I'm back in in stately uh uh Fritz uh, the Fritz homestead here as it were. Yeah, that's a thing. Um and I've been working on some things over the last day or two. Try and keep up, try and uh grow some of the projects that we're working on and I ran into an issue or two here and and Chat room, I hope you can help me out here. I've I, I want to get I want to get another pair of eyes. I want to 
get you seeing what I'm working on here and see if there's any feedback that you have because I'm I'm kind of tripped up and lost here and I think I think you might be able to help me and if not that's okay too um I've already raised a, a question back to the the Azure Functions team is where I'm running into a problem so I want to talk about Azure Functions up front and we were working on a project about a week or so ago that would help us download chat from Twitch automatically when the stream ends and I'm happy to report that it is doing that it is automatically downloading all of chat and it is saving that into an Azure blob storage so when this stream ends there's a message that's sent to Azure that says up oh, streams over and it goes and downloads all of the chat that goes with the video and I'm trying to set up um, automatic renewal of that and we'll take a look at what that looks like Happy Marvelous Sunday with Code, says Janescu. Thank you. Uh, yes, it, it will be a Marvelous Sunday with Code indeed. Um, because I'm, as I'm sure many of you know, there are a handful of folks live coding all day long here today. And we'll be able to raid right from one to the next to the next. RPF, Rocket Propelled Freeman, good to see you. Hello, hello. Um, so... I want to take a look at that briefly. And um, after we take a look at where things are with that automatic chat download, I want to roll over and take a look at... Um, well, I want to first thank... just resubscribed for six months. C-sharp, sloth, C-sharp, sloth, C-sharp, sloth, C-sharp, sloth, C-sharp, sloth, C-sharp, sloth. It's not a sloth. It's a sloth. Don't you know how to pronounce that stream elements? Come on now. Really? Wait, wait, let me let me explain something to you. Um, sloth, not sloth. That's right, MBB, sloth. What is that? Ah, there it was, one of those. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll make a donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Five other folks in chat got ha-ha holidays emotes. Thanks to our friends at Twitch and Coca-Cola. Cool, very cool. Um, let me see what else is going on. So after we finish talking about the Azure functions, we'll uh, we'll roll over and talk. Go back into some Blazor development, working on our subtrain feature that we were working on for our distributed chatbot. And when we come back Wednesday, Thursday next week, we'll do more about our Blazor uh, Blazor components for Web Forms developers. What do you think, chat room? Does that sound like a full day? Does that sound like a full show for you? I think it is. We'll bounce around here a little bit and have a good time. 25 days of serverless. Yeah, the the Azure um, uh, uh, cloud developer team, developer advocate team, is uh, doing a serverless um, event over there. More power to them. I'm happy to see them doing their thing. Um, I'm, I'm honestly looking at doing a month of Azure investigation and figuring out why I keep breaking it in January. Because for some reason it keeps breaking whenever I go live on on stream here, and it's weird. It it's weird that I touch things and it and it it just flat doesn't work sometimes. So we'll we'll dig into that a little bit. Um, no gritty dance today. That's right. Uh, they didn't do too well. Well, no. Wait a sec. Yesterday they won. They they beat um, Ottawa yesterday. Yesterday afternoon. So we're happy about that. Uh, what else is going on here? Cookie conflicts regarding Azure. I I don't think it's that. I've got some other things happening over there that are just strange. But let me get some music playing here in the background. Um, this is, of course, music to code by. And today I'm going to play Red. There it goes. I'm actually going to stop playing this for a little bit because I've got... Oh my gosh. Moist booty boy just gifted. Oh my subs. gosh. MBB. 20 gift subs. Holy cannoli. Are you kidding? Thank you so much for those 20 gift subs. I got an emote out of that. So did how many people? Oh my goodness. 100 and. Uh, uh, wait, what? 100 emotes shared to folks in chat. 20 gift subs shared around. Oh my goodness. We're going to make a bunch of donations to St. Jude. Um, Renium185, Rocket Propelled Freeman, Shin C. Chen, P. Sebastian, J. Chadwick. Hey, Jess Chadwick is here. Zulius, Coded Beard, Big Monty, 
Wanadza, Nile Crack, Nark Manon, Ulfum, Blue Blood GG, Another Fathead. Oh my gosh. Uh, Hissam Cal 2009, DJ Vortex, Paul Blart Maldkop, uh, J1859, JVK1993, and Banana Keeb. Congratulations. You all just got... You all just got subscriptions. Thank you so much, MBB. Oh my gosh. And uh, we're we're going to make a, a, yeah, a lot of donations there. That is very kind. I very much appreciate those gift subs. Wow. Wow. Holy crow. Lots of emotes there in the chat room. Absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. Congratulations, everybody. And thank, thank you so much for that generosity. I really appreciate that. And... And you've seen, we've got just a couple days until the uh, until we make our next donation to St. Jude. Probably, I need to time this with the Twitch payouts. Probably about a week from Tuesday is when we'll do the next one. Very cool. Thank you so much. Look at those gritty emotes now in chat. Oh yeah, here they come. Thank you very, very much. Wow. Okay. Where was I before all that? I don't remember. So, um, let's get into this. Let's talk about, let's get it back into the project. <laughs> Welcome back, the beautiful orange freak of nature, says RPF. Yeah. Love to see the emotes. No, uh, yes. Uh, uh, MBB, you never have to apologize for getting me off track for that. That was tremendous. That was very generous. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's do this. Let's take a look at what's going on with the project. This is going. This is what's attempting to do the the chat download, of course, for the kids. Absolutely. And friends, if you want to make a donation directly to St. Jude, you don't want to do subscriptions. You don't want to do cheers. That's okay too. There's a link to my Tiltify uh, St. Jude campaign directly below the video here. You can click through there if you want to make a donation. You can do that directly. And and there is a pop up. I just put the St. Jude logo that'll appear right here with the information about the donation. Thank you so much. Um, you were very good last week and didn't mention Miami's kicker against, well, it's the Eagles. The Phillies are the baseball team, Smith. But yeah, that that wasn't, sports-wise in Philadelphia, it wasn't a very good weekend last week. <laughs> Terrible. All right. I'm worn out already. I'm worn out. I'm calling it a day right there. Let me show you what's going on here. Is the is the hair still blue? Asks Rambling Geek. Of course it is. Take a look. Take a look at that. Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah, we're still blue. Of course. Darn Skippy, it's still blue. <clears throat> look at all the love from from Blue Bud Blue Blood GG. Oh yeah. All right. Um, let me head over to, well, and then we're going to go back over to the code over here. This is the project Twitch chat archive. And see, my, my hands are blue from just touching my scalp. At the the dye's been coming off of my hands and I've been getting blue everywhere. It's weird. Weird. Um, this is my Twitch chat archive project. And I'm going to mark this on as the project command right now. Um, investigating... Uh, Cloud table storage issues with Azure functions in this project. All right. Um, so what's what's happening here is I now have this project set up so that um, I've moved some things around a little bit too. Um, da -da -da. Okay. So. What happens when when you start working with with Twitch to receive information about when a stream ends? Um, I set up so that I receive an end of stream notification, and that request comes in and it it tells me, hey, uh, this is a webhook notification, and it says this stream ended, and I now have it actually connecting out to a service bus. And a service bus is a series of queues is a good way to think about this. It's like a fire hose. You pour in messages in the top and it will fan it out across what they call topics. 
and notify all those applications that are subscribing to those topics that this thing happened and here's a message. So it'll replicate that and send that message out. Uncle Bill Druin, hello, good to see you. It's a series of tubes, Mr. Mini Burger, that's right. Um, so what what I'm doing here is when I receive an end of me, end of stream notification, I verify it, I check, and I get the information about the completed stream. And I uh, put that information onto the uh, onto the service bus. So completed stream, channel ID, video ID, and that completed stream is sent out on the service bus. So it's it says, hey, this channel finished, and here's the ID of the stream that just ended. So you can go and mine information about it appropriately, right? Collect some marketing information if we want to do that, these types of things. Um, statistics that are already out there and being collected. But here's what, what I need to do is, I, in order for this webhook to know, right? In order for Twitch to know, hey, send this notification to Fritz here. We need to subscribe. So down here we subscribe at this location we send some information out to them that says hey i want to be told at this callback url right and it's actually specified right there at this url that something happened that the stream changed right particularly we're looking for the end of stream event and what i've done is in order to keep track of these is I've put together an object called a current subscription and it has the channel ID and I set the expiration date to be however long that least time is minus one day this way I've got some notice and I've got some some buffer that when the subscription is going to expire we'll know a day ahead of time that that's gonna that's gonna stop do I want to build a snowman no I'm not gonna build a snowman what do you think this is? This isn't frozen over here. RPF, thank you so much for the host. Appreciate that. So I insert that into cloud table storage. But here's the deal. See this up here? This is called a table trigger. Uh, a, uh, this is a table attribute that will connect this cloud table object to a table in my currency subscriptions object, right? And it's the same queue that I use um, for the subscription. Um, where'd it go? Queue trigger connection. Yeah, Twitch chat storage. That's the name of the table and it's using the same storage account but it's going to get a table out of there and it's a cloud table for us to interact with. Here's the thing. They've moved cloud table storage to Cosmos DB. So I'm getting all kinds of disconnections and this is the wrong version of that and I don't know how to connect to this types of issues. This is my So that's what I'm going to be fighting here for the next little bit to see if we can get that corrected. What do you think? Do you think we can take a look at that chat room and take a look through there? Well, and and then we'll get back into Blazer is what we'll do. Thank you for the follow. I, is it IQ Cyb? Appreciate you joining us. Welcome. So let's take a look at this. I want to show you what happens when I try to build this um, because it's just weird. Um, let me show you. So cloud table, when I mouse over this, you can see it's right there. It's in Azure Cosmos table, cloud table. It's part cloud table storage is now part of Cosmos DB. We know this. They've told us this. No, they didn't tell us this. They just kind of moved it over there. Didn't tell us this, updated all the APIs and, and stuff just broke. We need to tell the Scott because this is really flipping annoying. And I moved this over to Azure Cosmos Table Cloud Table because this, the API that I was using, Azure Storage Table, doesn't work. Right? Let me show you. You use Azure Functions Storage as Azure Web Jobs Extensions Storage, says Janesco. See, isn't that confusing? Because these things are in different places. They're not where they were, and we need to go dig through them and figure out how to wire this up. And 
I'm not getting errors from the APIs or from analyzers or anything that says, hey, this thing and this thing don't match. Because if I mouse over this, it's a table attribute. And table attribute, check this out, you're gonna love this, is inside Azure Web Jobs. Well, I should be able to use the Azure Web Jobs reference then to cloud table to get that. No, it doesn't work like that. I'll go you one further. Check this out. So inside my data, um, I have a current subscription object and it's a table entity. It needs to be a Cosmos table table entity because in order to do the insert. Otherwise, well... It's illegal in nine countries. And it won't work. It's confusing. So I'm gonna tr I wanna try and dedupe this a little bit. I wanna try and figure out what the connecting points are here because the documentation for this points everything towards Azure storage, but table storage isn't in Azure storage. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put on my uh, my gunner glasses here and we're gonna get some get some coding done. We're gonna get this thing fixed. All right, all right, chat room. Here we go. Keep an eye on this. Let me know what's going on. Um, all of the channel, the channel bits subscription, channel points subscriptions, the Fritz bits, you, they're available to be cashed in. And uh, we're gonna dig through here. We're gonna figure out what's going on. And uh, you know what? Let me just show you what happens when I compile, right? Just kick this off to show you what it looks like because uh, stuff's messed up. It, it compiles, it clearly compiles. See, build succeeded and it runs. You have thirty-three thousand now. Oh my gosh, I need to I need to make some more some more uh, redemptions for that so you can turn in some other cool stuff. This isn't a Minecraft stream, asks Ren N. No, not Minecraft. Sorry. Um, you know what? That I'm gonna turn down. I'm gonna turn down red here a little bit. Pardon me for a second. So that I can push this up a little bit more. And those other sounds are are over it. Now check this out. Here's here's where I'm like pulling my hair out. Odin Hassan, good well, good evening. My goodness. 11:30 uh in Malaysia. Welcome. Um let me come to your question in just a second here, the only second. I'm actually going to pin that in featured chat so we can take a look. Here's where I'm running into this. Scheduled resubscribe function is an error. Um, and I'm, that's not even the one I'm looking at, but it's the exact same error here. Check this out. Um, error indexing method subscribe. Windows Azure Web Jobs extension storage can't bind table to type Azure Cosmos table cloud table. Okay. All right. So when I go back and say, well, then let me let me pull out the pull out the Cosmos reference and point it back to some other cloud table. Let's see what happens, because cloud table is the thing that you can bind this to, right? If I go over here to the documentation, Azure Table Storage Bindings, blah 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 table cloud table, and this is coming out of Microsoft Windows Azure Storage. Azure storage table. So let's use that using statement. Let me see if that works. So I'm gonna go back over here to, this was in stream manglement, manglement? Management. And I'm gonna to come to your question in just a second here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me pull out Cosmos, this one. Goodbye. And I'll put the other one in. Thank you for the follow, raising. Appreciate it. So all I did was change the using statement. And we're gonna start this up, see what happens. And I shouldn't have, if, if it's bound properly, I shouldn't have that error. Oh, but I've got a build error. What's the build error? Cannot convert current subscription to I table entity. Cannot, current subscription cannot be used. There is no implicit reference from uh, current subscription to storage table, right? Windows Azure storage table. So I need to change this now to Windows Azure storage table. All right, so let's go back over here. We're gonna change this from Azure Cosmos table, comment that one out, and when I control dot on this chalupa, 
Windows Azure storage table. Let's see if that one works. And go. So now it builds because I've got it lined up so it's both using Azure storage table. And... Um, subscribe isn't listed here. Okay. Um, scheduled subscribe. Subscribe function is an error. Error in indexing subscribe. Cannot bind table to type Windows Azure storage table cloud table. So now I'm confused because that's exactly what it was doing here. seconds I don't know what to do I'm confused and I'm dancing around in circles chasing this I mean what the heck right so um, I don't know hmm yeah Janesco it's weird right um so let me just take a look at this go back to here so my subscribe method is pointing to table f12 into this and this is azure web jobs table is it i'm using the wrong table right if that's azure web jobs table let me get rid of this one is there a different table attribute that I should be using, right? If I control dot on that, I have component model data annotation schema. We use that for things like entity framework. But the only other option I have is Azure Web Jobs. I wire that up and everything just works. So I'm lost. I'm confuzzled. This one down here, right? Remove that one. It, and it doesn't give me so I don't know what to do um bang so uh let me come to the question here from the only second have has an Azure question about container instances and the application gateway how do I use Azure DevOps to actually deploy into the container instance they don't seem to be an option for it into the container instance. Well, you're not you you never deploy into an instance. You deploy an image and you'll start up new instances and migrate out other instances. Let me look at what the discussion here in the chat room. You tried app services initially, but it doesn't have good support for launching into a private uh, VNet for a whitelisted database. So I moved to just containers and implementing your own gateway. Um, well, I thought App Service did have support for private networks. The other way is to have CI build to Azure Container Registry, right? They have the CLI to customize to build. And there's a tutorial for that. Yeah. So Azure Container Instances Azure and um, the, the Azure Container Service are where I think you're going to end up going. You may even end up in... Um, service fabric and get through there. You've seen this before, but looked at the CLI, the updating the container seemed to have restrictions. You, you're never going to update a running container. That's the point of containers is that they're disposable. You, you never maintain a container, right? You update, when you have to update, you build a new instance and you transition folks to the new instance and discard the running one. So you never, never, never update a running container. They're they're very disposable. Um, so, how do you do the transition using Azure DevOps? DevOps, you're going to use a release pipeline, and the release pipeline will allow you to deploy, start up a new instance, and knock down the previous one. So, app service when you deploy a container you can have it automatically pull in the new one when, when it sees it and uh, it'll restart the app automatically for you. 
But if you're running at scale and you want to have failover, you want to have a redundant server, there's there's a way to do that. I, I haven't done this personally where you can start a second one and uh, transition folks over to it. It has to do with with how you use the load balancer or something like that. You did see Azure has app service environment, but it's 1500 a month. Oh my goodness. Uh, no, there's a cheaper way to do it than that. I don't know what it is, but I, I don't think that's it. So, yeah, 1500 a month, no. That wouldn't be where I would go at all. No, 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 no. Um, okay. So, this is where I'm at for this. Um, and right, and I'm, I'm kind of dead in the water with using Cloud Table here as a binding. Right? The other way for me to go would be to, um, I see what you did there. The other way for me to go here would be to pull out the table binding and create the table connection directly down here, which kind of defeats the whole point of having the table binding here. Michael Jolly, the bald bearded builder. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, Sun Ergonol. Hello. Hello. I, I, was going to have a good stream, but Michael Jolly just ruined my day. I see what you did there. Go! Friends, it's been requested that we switch to a text editor for 15 minutes. Okay. I see how this works. I see how this works. I'm watching you. <sighs> Fine. Let me just double check here. I'm going to push this over to back to my Cosmos table uh, reference here. And also, um, I'm going to do this with uh, back over here. All right. Changes back to the way I had it, basically. And I know Janescu, I know, because Janescu has the perfect response to this. When 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 I yeah I I see you there, giggling. Um. Uh yeah look look at this. All right, hey mind right, I, right. No, you cannot be trusted with this much power. Where is it? How long is how long am I going here on on a text editor? No, they changed the thing here. One second. Where is it? It's over here now. The link is is wrong here. Uh, text editor for fifteen minutes. All right. All right. So, friends, we're going to go back and we're going to... I'm going to rip out the table binding here for subscribe. And I also have a method down here called scheduled resubscribe that reaches into the cloud table. And, yeah, I know it's ambiguous. Um, right. Uh, oh. Oh, my. Well, I'm going to end up removing it anyway. And I'm going to wire up directly to the cloud table, but we're going to do that using a text editor. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to rip the, uh, I'm going to rip the, uh, the bandaid off here and jump right in because Michael Jolly said so. Man! Let me open up the f folder here. So I'm looking at the right folder and I'm going to turn off my navigation pane. All right. And there's my project. 
Post stream, Jeff ups the amount for text editor to 25K. Oh no, no, no. I'm not, I, I would not cheat like that. I'm, please. Of course I'm going to do something like this. And we're gonna need to run the command window over here like that. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to run this too well from here, am I? Am I gonna be able to .NET run that? Pardon me for a second. Let me just try .NET run. What happens? Does that do the thing here? I'll open the first file and I'll start the timer. Be nice if you could find a tutorial for launching a new container draining the backend application to the gateway using a CI pipeline. Sergey, what am I working on today? Check out the uh, check out the project command exclamation point project, and you'll see we're working on Azure Functions and working with table storage. No, no containers. No containers here. All right, Michael Jolly, here we go. So we're working inside of, which one was it? Stream management. This is where we are. And there is no, what's it called? There is no live share for this because it's a text editor. Set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, your timer is set for 15 minutes. Here we go. So the error we're getting right now is I need to fix the reference between Cosmos DB and Azure Storage table, cloud table. So let me go up here. Uh, this one, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm even gonna turn this into a .NET watch run, okay? And let's see what happens. We should get this building in it. We should be able to see what's going on here. No. Unable to run my project. Fine. .NET watch build. At least build the thing for me, you know? Cool. Build succeeded. But it doesn't work. Um, yes, Robert Tables, my friend, we are working with Azure Tables. And we're hoping to get that working. Um, yes, the only site can. You can run a bunch of CLI commands from within a release pipeline. But you should be able to trigger and activate some things there easily. Like, you should be able to call some of those Azure deployment things from within the release pipeline. So I'm going to scroll down here. Where was it? Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Here, I'm going to rip out the table connection right here going into the table called currency subscriptions. And I'm instead going to make that something that we build. Um, gosh, I feel like I want to put together a, a just a class that does that uh, table management for us. You know? Blazer, Mr. Magoo, good afternoon. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's put together over here in a data folder. Oh, I can't... Look at this. I'm trying to Alt Shift C and I can't Alt Shift C in Notepad. Thank you, Michael Jolly. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Azure table. No. Um, current subscriptions repository. I can do that, right? I can do that. Okay. Name. Look at this. Look at this. Name space uh, Fritz dot Twitch chat archive dot data. Oh my god. Public class current current subscriptions repository. You learn to really appreciate the the code editors. When somebody does this to you and says, hey, why don't you just code everything in Notepad? <sighs> right? At least going to keep an eye on this thing. Save. Tell me that that built properly. What do you mean you're not building? Build. Go. Why isn't it building? Right? That should build. Why aren't you building? Build again. Two warnings. That's fine. This is good. This is fine. 
Okay. Uh, so let's put in a constructor. Pu public current subscription. No, that's not how you spell that. Subscriptions repository. I need to receive a configuration. Um, and let's put that inside of a configuration object equals configuration and oh, crap I can't generate the field all right fun thank you for the follow who's our new follower there Sasa welcome appreciate you joining us and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room when I'm able to use a proper text editor ruined totally ruined Threnin totally ruined Okay, so now I have configuration. So, um, right, I want to get a collection of current subscriptions. So let's call it an I enumerable of current subscriptions. Current subscription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get expiring subscriptions. Ah, look at that. All right. Um, and it's something like this. Right. Um, but, uh, you had to make me look more mortal in, in order to help you with imposter syndrome. Yes, but I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to make you better. Yum install notepad C sharp syntax highlighter. That's a great idea, Odin Hassan. That's a really great idea. But 60% of the time, it works every time. And I don't think it's going to work this time. And you blow it! I did not blow it. I did this on purpose, okay? I'm I'm really gonna oh, I I totally freak out. Um doo -doo -doo. there aren't any native support for containers in the CI pipeline. There's no, there's gotta be. There's gotta be. I can't imagine there isn't. Some schools still force students to use Notepad for intro computer science classes meant to get more students excited to become IT professionals. That is just wrong. I agree, Johan. Um, all right, so one of my errors that I've got here, type or namespace, I enumerable cannot be found. Oh, I need a using statement. Okay, so what's the using statement? Um, well, I'm going to need using system, I think. And is it using system dot collections that'll get me that? Come on. Start it. Yeah, yeah. It should, I should get one error here that it's not returning. No. I enumerable cannot be used with type argument. Crumbs. Uh, oh, and configuration is in... Uh, configuration somewhere else. Where is it? Configuration comes out of. Oh man, don't I have? Don't I have that one open already? No, nope, not down there. Uh, let's edit this one like this. Okay. System collections generic. Well, and then I'm gonna hopefully get it to compile properly. All right. And I, I configuration comes out of yeah this one Microsoft extension. Look at this right. Copy paste inheritance at its finest. All right, let's see if that works. Is that going to compile properly for me? Right. Cool. One error, and it's because I'm not returning. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I'll return null here, and this should this should compile properly. Right. Right. Look at that. No red. Builds properly. All right. Ship it. I drink. And I know things. Yes, I know I didn't write it properly. All right. Um, yeah, Docker containers should be very well supported in Azure pipelines. I thought they were. Um, ASP.NET Core question. Is it possible for a piece of middleware to read in and modify the response body to insert something specifically into the head of an HTML page? Asks Blazor Mr. Magoo. Um, you can inspect, but inserting into the head of it um, is something that they prevent you from doing with middleware because they um, they don't want to buffer things. So you're going to need to somehow intercept how it's being generated, um, which means you, you can actually run it all the way at the very end as the as a terminating piece of middleware and read through, capture everything as it's being output and inject it. There's a way to do this. I've done it before in a configuration project. I'm going to park your, your question and come back to it when I'm done going through my my trial here with Notepad. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Oh, yes, I do. It means pain. That's what it means. 
Um, so I'm going to go into the documentation here and, and I'm going to get um, Azure Table Storage. I'm going to get the, the code to just work directly with Azure Table Storage. No, I don't want to buy it. I already have it. Um, I'm going to get the documentation for how to interact with this. Step-by-step -step tutorials. Uh, no, I wanted table storage. And it's not in here anymore because they moved it to Cosmos. I don't want pricing. I don't want connectors because connectors don't work. Don't they? Let me see. Uh, yeah, these don't work because they moved it. So, no. Right, or is this for Power Apps? It's this is this is for docs. That's what this is for. This is for docs. Give me a title on something. Um, Azure Table Storage C Sharp. Come on, give me something. Something. Object Storage in Azure. Come on. Uh, show me a sample. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how to set it up. I've already got it set up. There we go. No, no. Storage account from connection string. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Create cloud table client, and then that should do a thing. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. No, I'm not using Notepad++. That's cheating. That has IntelliSense. iWatcher, why do I need to do this? There is some flavor of incorrect design here. There is iWatcher, and it's because Azure functions are broken. At least the .NET APIs. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I need to create a cloud storage account. I feel like that's something I want to end up uh, refactoring here, but we'll do this. New cloud storage account. And we're going to pass in the storage connection string. Well, the storage connection string is inside of configuration something. I forget what I called it. What did I call it? It's over here in this one. The connection string is not that one. That's the service bus connection string. Da -da -da -da. Twitch chat storage. There we go. Okay, so now I have the account. So now I need the client, and the client was... Come on, here we can, we can do this. We can do this. Storage account, create table client. New table client configuration. Uh, that feels weird. That, that feels stupid. That feels really stupid. Right? Customer entity, da, da, da. <clears throat> table operation, table execute result. Where's table? Table is a cloud table being passed in. How do I get a cloud table? How do I get a cloud table? I'm trying. I'm not just trying to code without the ID iWatcher, but that we had a redemption that um, from our friend, uh, the bald bearded builder there, the Michael Jolly, who's uh, trolling me and making me use. Um, so if I do that, storage account. I don't call it storage account. I just called it account like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so now I have a client, but I don't know how to interact from the client to get a table. Insert or merge. I right, see this is already at cloud table. How do I get a cloud table from a client? Right. Delete an entity. I'm, I, you're already working on tables here, friend. How do you get from a client to a table? Right, table client. Oh, 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 get table reference. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, not this one, that one. All right, so var table equals table client get table reference and the table name that I'm going to get is, uh, not that one, this one, currency subscriptions. Okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. All right, so now I have I feel like this should be wrapped up into a, uh, a private method to get these. Um, what's a bad idea? I'm going to come back to chat here in just a minute. It is a bad idea to do this. Totally bad idea. Very bad, very bad. All right, so now I have the table, and and its name is Robert. No, kidding. Maybe. Um, if I'm going to get those that are... And, and I already have a thing down here to, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my window's too big. Scrolled off the bottom. Stop laughing over there. Oh, heck. 
No. This. There we go. Okay. Um, there we go. Get current web... So that gets the current subscriptions off of uh, Twitch. But I, here we go. Scheduled resubscribe. So this is going to run um, every two hours at... I'm sorry. Every two hours at the... So at the two minute mark. So at like uh, 10.02... Uh, 1202, 202, 402, 602, blah, blah, blah. It's going to check to make sure, hey, do I have anything that I need to resubscribe? So what I did was my partition key is uh, in that table is actually the date that it's going, the, the, the date that it's going to expire. So since I put the date in as one day earlier, if it finds... We're going to go search for and find those with the partition key of today. And create a table query and execute query. See here, look, he's already on this on the cloud table here. So I feel like, you know what? This bit here where it goes and gets the records. I could wrap that up. I could totally wrap that up. Um, so, all right, let me take this. I've only got a few minutes left. Actually, time's almost up. Um, so let's just call this get table client, right? Let me move this, right? Let me move this down here, right? Because what I'll do is, um, oh, there's the timer. Oh, gosh. I'm going to finish this method real quick. Um, I'm going to set this up so I'm returning a uh, cloud table, get cloud table, and we'll ask for a table name. Thank you for the follow. Steck1977, welcome. So this uh, table equals get cloud table, and just to finish this thought here, this right here and like that and I'm gonna pass in table name and I'm just going to return that and get rid of this oops I'm missing let me make sure that compiles and then we'll go back to Visual Studio why didn't it compile could not be found okay because cloud table isn't right I don't have the appropriate using statement so let me just copy in the using statement. Oh, I've got this. I've got this. I will not give up on this quite so easily. I will not let Michael Jolly get the best of me. Uh, cloud storage account does not contain a constructor that takes one argument. It doesn't. It doesn't. Where did the, I had the documentation here. Where did it go? Nope, not that one. Uh, create storage account from connection string. Create storage account. Cloud storage account dot parse. Fine. I'm not going to give up on this. You aren't going to get away that easy. Okay. Table client does not exist in the current context. Um, I'm going to get this working and be done with it. I'm just going to return null there so I get rid of that last error. Uh, oh, this is uh, ooh, var client equals uh, account dot create table client. Return client dot get table reference. And that should take care of those last two. Come on. Come on. There we go. All right. And it's time to go back to Visual Studio. Thank you so much, Michael Jolly, for produce, presenting that challenge. We did a text editor for 15 minutes because Michael Jolly cashed in 15,000 Fritz bits. Those are the little orange gears you see down at the bottom of chat. Right over... Right over there. Click through there. There's a whole bunch of different things you can redeem. You can ask me to wear a different hat. You can change my font if you'd like. You can open up and we'll use Live Share here. Maybe you want me to record a voiceover for you. We can do that. We can even change my font to Comic Sans, to Papyrus, all kinds of fun stuff here. 
check it out, click through there, and if you have ideas for other things you'd like to be able to redeem for, let me know. Drop me a line uh, either here or over in the in the channel Discord, and we'll take a look and uh, get into this. Bald Bearded Builder! What a great sport. Thank you so much for that very kind cheer. Absolutely. I, I so much appreciate that. Um... Let me record that cheer here. Oh my goodness. Spell it right. I so much appreciate that. What day is tonight? What? I, I don't even remember what day today is. The 8th. Uh, 8, 12, 19. There we go. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So there was a question. Let me let me go back over chat because I, I wanted to stay focused on the code here while we were going through. Um, Wanadza says, uh, you're a human. Is it wrong for you to hang out on Sunday being influenced? No, you're fine. Um, someone continue the notepad reward. Thanks, Landon. Thanks. Paul Blart Mald Cop. Welcome back. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Brig Caff. Caff uh, Brig Caffey. Welcome. Uh, no IDE challenge failed. No, no. We just did just fine. You've got plenty more Fritz bits. Oh, don't do that to me. Um, too much cruelty for one day. That's right. You got a sub. Yes, Paul Blart. You did. Please include the proper library. I think I did. Uh, Monday would be better suited. <laughs> um, ne never realized I feed your kids. How do I feed your kids, Wanaza? Uh, you're in an Azure flame, but you'll do it. Yeah, there's some interesting things happening there. 25 others in chat. Got emotes. Thanks to the bald bearded builders. Cheer. Uh, congratulations to all those folks that got emotes. Um, can we pay to make me sweat like Steve Ballmer in a button down? Says Party Ultra. Um, no. Let's see here. Preferably, if you have architecture diagram on what you want to achieve, it will be easier for you to ask your opinion from fellow Azure colleagues. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the follow, uh, Igle. I hope I pronounced that right. You can throw in some papyrus tagger on shore. You're welcome to do that. We can have some fun here. Um, but Blazer Mr. Magoo had a question here. Is it possible for the piece of middleware to read in and modify the response body to insert something into the head of an HTML page? I had a sample that I used to shop around here a lot. Let me share this uh, sample that I would, that I would show. Um, and this was about all the different ways that you could configure ASP.NET. ASP.NET Core. Um, let me go back over, open up my navigation pane. There we go. Um, and it is in, I think it's, is it in my demos? I don't think it's in my, I think it's in my dev folder. Um, because I had, da, 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 da. I, I gave this demonstration many times, including in, uh, in Brno when I was over there. Um, I presented and showed all the different ways that you could configure in some C-sharp features, and I don't see it on this machine. Hmm. Is it... Is it over here? Because there, there's like three or four different ways that you can push in configuration here, and I don't see it. But one of the things was middleware. And I had, uh, and, and I talked about building custom middleware as part of the presentation, and it was inside the demo, inside the demo project, and I don't see it here. Hmm. You've already had enough pain for today? No, no, it's br bring it on. What do you think I am? Wait, master. Let's go. It might be dangerous. Um, yeah, I don't. Hmm. It's like ASP.NET middleware, I think is what I called it or something. But there is, there was a middleware app that I had that did this. Um, right. Middleware. Yes. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. That's not it. Um, 
it's not in there. It was like advanced also. I don't see it off the top of my head. I'm going to need to go dig for it. But there is a way to do it, and I did have it working. Uh, that's why you're saving up for a million. A million! Week-long notepad streams. No, don't do that. Oh my gosh, no. Vizio with Azure Stencil. You can use Lucid Char. Uh, working on a blog post for C-Sharp Advent, specifically covering right in custom middleware. Yeah, custom middleware is relevant. Um... It's definitely something that you can do. Uh, let me see if I can find the docs real quick. Custom ASP.NET Core middleware. Because what I would do is, the gist of the demo was I would take um, information out of, uh, out of the configuration and drop it into um, the footer of the page. And there was a way to do that right so middleware invoke async and it's like right you have the context you want to be able to inspect the the, re the response and change it um, right modify response And, and this is something da, 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 da. Uh, no custom ASP.NET yeah response message read no that's not it nope nope uh that's not a there's middleware right context response right async but there's a right when you want to overwrite some of the content you want to inject into the header you want to inject into the footer there was a um hey net jam junior good to see you uh da, 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 da. Right, and folks were using this to, to indicate, like, the, uh... Chris Jones, thank you for the resub. Chris Jones just resubscribed for 16 months. Um, uh, custom ASP.NET Core middleware, and to set, like, the environment. Right, folks would, uh, would do this. Get a header value for authorization policy. Um, <laughs> yes, what's middleware? Swagger endpoint, custom middleware, storing the event ID. All right. Um, that's just getting it. Yeah, so where do you, where did you dump it back out? No. Right, you could hit it with the logger. Context response rate, right async, but it would write it to the end. Yeah. I would need to dig a little bit up there, but there is a way to do this. Um, just got your shirt in the mail from the DevCon stream. Looks great. Ah, congratulations. Glad to hear you you got that from uh, Dev Intersections. Yes. So let's keep going through here. I'm going to wire up the cloud storage account. And uh, yeah, Blazer, Mr. Magoo, let me take a look. It might be on another machine, but I do have I do have a sample that does that, and it puts a a label on the uh, on the page to indicate what environment it is. Let me I'll dig that up and uh, follow up with you on Discord later. So this now, I can get a cloud table, and I actually want to return the list of expiring subscriptions. I'm going to get rid of this one. Um, I, I'm going to get rid of a couple of these, and this one, and I don't want to show you my local settings. So, where is it? Scheduled resubscribe here. I'm going to get rid of 
this connection. Um, and do this. Something like that. In fact, yeah, I'm just going to copy it for right now. Copy the whole chalupa. Drop it in here and let's take a look, see if we can make this. Um, so the results is going to be, and it doesn't know what this is. Um, change these from cloud table to just table. Doesn't know what to do with these yet. I'm not actually going to do anything with that. Await table. I can't await because this needs to be an async task. Right. And yes, I need a using statement. All right, it's still not returning anything yet, but that's okay. Um, so results equals that. So if results is a table query segment of current subscription. So let's create an out list. Yeah. Uh, equals a new list of type uh, current subscription. Right, so I'll say outlist dot add. I want to add range actually, right? Uh, results dot results. Yes, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. So when that loop is done, I'm going to return outlist. So now I've got a collection of all the current subscriptions from that. All right, I can do this. I can do this. So I can get rid of this stuff, right? Um, and eventually I need to delete those items. Hmm. Figure that out in a minute. Um, Uh, okay. Uh, current, current subscriptions equals, and this is inside of, uh, uh, new current sub subscription repository, and I'm going to pass in configuration. E uh, equals repository get expiring subscriptions okay in current subscriptions what do you mean you can't do that no oh, I gotta well wait this bazinga why did I just say that I've totally got the guy saying it right I can do that I have that it's a thing bazinga there we go um, <laughs> what's the article you got there from Tim Corey? The video from him? Uh, oh, tips for getting started. Yep, yep. Got your shirt last week. Had to be a Xamarin though because they'd run out of the .NET ones. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. I mean, not a bad thing, but if you wanted a .NET one, you got the Xamarin one. Um, <laughs> way too influenced. It's so nice to not block you. Well, okay. Uh, some guru told me, someone who thought you about a better future is, what? All right. Welcome, Winata. There's some tacos. Thank you. All right. Um, so I need to do this bit here to clear out, right, um, a current subscription. So let me go back over to the repository. Let's create a method to remove, right? I know! Um, that's an execute async. So we will make this async task remove subscription. And we're going to need this subscription to remove, right? Uh, we'll just call it a sub. Um, so I need to get the cloud table equals... Uh, thank you for the follow. Zach Morgs, welcome. And we're going to get uh, current subscriptions, right? 
That's not the right name of the table. That is. Let me get that. Okay. And to remove it was this. Table operation delete. So this is just table and we're going to await that. I could just return that, couldn't I? Right? Uh, sub. Now why don't you like this? That one. Now why don't you like this? Yeah, I know. We'll run synchronously. No, it won't. Um, I don't want this to be async because I'm just going to return the task and I'm going to let it be handled outside. So now I should be able to say... Right? Um, repo dot remove subscription. And that works. Maybe that should be a reward. I have to say all the voice commands himself for five minutes. No! That's a bad idea. Bad idea. Don't like that idea. We're not going to do that idea. No. Um, all right. Taking a glance around. Good. Huge cheers. Thank you. All right. Uh, so get current webhook subscriptions. This is now... Why is it grumpy? I have an extra one of these. All right, so scheduled resubscribe. That should work now. Uh, let's see. I need to go get rid of the other table reference, which was here. Uh, that's That might be one reason why it doesn't, isn't able to connect to the table, because the table name doesn't exist. Right? Oops. Um, okay, current subscription. So we're going cloud table. So we need to be able to create that record here. So we're going to add a subscription. Right? So let's create a... I don't like that. Why is you go away? Yeah, now we don't need that. Good. So I need an add subscription. Uh, public task add subscription. Current subscription sub. And this is going to do something like this. But I've already got a subscription being passed in, so I don't need that. We're going to return that. I need to get a table. Show me the table. Show me the table. And we'll change this to just table. It's almost too easy. Okay. So here. New. Uh, current subscription repository. Configuration. I love that it suggests it for me to complete that. Uh, repo dot add subscription sub. Wow. Wow. Looks like you're late to the Blazor coding party. No, we haven't started on Blazor yet here. Um, all right, so that should now I can get rid of because I'm not using it the cloud table. Yeah, look at it, it grayed out there. I can remove it. Why won't it say remove? Eh, whatever, goodbye. So now it should be able to bind to that properly, right? Ooh. Okay, so that built properly. Let's see if it actually runs. It's a whole Azure Functions party. We're starting there. We're starting there. We're going to roll back over to Blazor here in just a minute. Do, 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 do. Uh, what happened there? Uh... 
Um, oh my goodness, look at this. Uh, scheduled resubscribe. Can't bind to queue of type storage queue, cloud queue. Possible causes. 931, but 932. Oh, man. Windows Azure Storage. There's a version skew here happening. Thank you, Robert Tables. So... Where to go? This one. Hmm. Even though I've hard coded it, let me see. Is there are there updates that we need to pull in? Um. Yeah, let's take it all. Even though these are going to preview versions. Uh, I don't know if I should have taken those. I'm not going to take those. Uh, I don't want to include pre-release. This one, uh, wait a sec. Tell me it's going all the way to three. All right. Wait a sec. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to commit this. Um, before function reference update. Because I have a feeling after I do this, I'm going to get a bunch of broken code all over the place. Now I'll do the update. Yeah, what could go wrong? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You're right, Desert Griffin. Make that... Well, right? Let me look at this. Oh, maybe. Nope. Please tell me that's doing a restore. Oh, my. Well, that looks like it built properly. I mean, if you're telling me that you can't find ASP.NET Core. I mean, literally. All right, let's see what happens when we pull that out. And what's this one supposed to be going to? Sure, bring in the abstraction. What else? MVC does not exist. Well, it's not referencing that, so let's get rid of those. HTTP trigger. It doesn't know what HTTP trigger is. No. 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 HTTP and webhooks. And if we go down to two... They're provided in Azure Web Jobs Extensions HTTP NuGet package, version 3.x. Why are they in version 3 for version 2? Whatever. Okay, this one. Uh, because naming is hard. Versioning is hard. Uh, 
uh, NPM audit fix on that 3.0 repo was a bad idea. You, you aren't kidding. All right, some of these are going away. Timer, trigger, run on startup. Oh, man. All right, so where's the timer trigger coming from now? They put that somewhere else? Azure Web Jobs Extensions. Well, it looks like I've already got that somewhere. Here. No, I don't have it installed. Then how did it work before? So that should get rid of some of these timer ones. Better. Okay. Uh, so now if I can do that. Authorization level. Why don't... Uh, yeah. Okay, that looks like it worked. Let's see what it looks like now. The instant I saw me with the glasses, you thought of uh, ancient uh, Agent Smith. Agent Smith. Yeah. Nico Head 2. Welcome. Thank you for the follow. Build succeeded. Let's see what happens this time. All that because I had I was upgrading a minor version number of Azure Storage. And even then, let's see what happens here. Come on. No. And things are more broken. Can I bind bar parameter logger to type I logger? Okay. Yeah. None of these work now. Current webhook subscriptions, receive end of stream, they work. Yeah. I'm going to roll back. This is not worth it. Th this... Th no. Um... Uh, D3131110... Nope. Okay. Um, and the version mismatch that we had. You like the Azure ASCII art? Yeah. yeah. There's a there's a unicorn when you use the entity framework tools. All right, let's see what we get this time. See, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I know you don't have a you don't have a string there. Stop. Um, can I bind to table of type? Okay, hang on. This is in schedule resubscribe. I thought I removed that. Let me remove that. Restart. Try again. Nope. Wait, what happened to the code I checked in? Oh, wait a sec. this again. Whoo! We're writing a couple of Azure functions here that are integrating with Twitch and we're trying to use Azure table storage but um, we've run into a couple of issues. 
Well, okay, look, it's telling me my service bus connection string is missing or empty. And that's okay. Um, let me go key it in. I, it looks like it's going to work. Um, but if you excuse me for a second here, I'm going to go over to this view so that I can go get my service bus connection string and paste it into my local settings here. Uh, where is it? I don't know why they call it shared access policies now. It's a key. Like, we know this. And you're clouding things up because you're calling it something that it isn't. Uh, did you did I undo a commit in Git? I didn't undo it, but I checked out the last one that I committed before. Um, has very verbose Microsofty names. It's very enterprisey. It was connection strings on the name of that, but they changed it. Um, here we go. Um, execution. All right. So scheduled resubscribe failed. Exception while executing function. Cosmos table not found on scheduled resubscribe. Is this because I put the wrong name in there? Let me, let's check out here. Twitch channel subscription. Get expiring subscriptions here. Current subscriptions. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let me go over. Here is my dashboard. There's my storage. And I'm gonna go look at tables. But you can call me Robert. There it is, current subscriptions. So, oh, this is working um, on the local, local storage, which doesn't have uh, Azure Storage Emulator. I didn't create a, there we go, Azure Storage Explorer. In my local, uh, emulator here, I don't have a current subscriptions table that this connects into when we're working locally. Hence the name local. Um, yeah, I did a reset, technically, is what I did. You're correct, uh, Johan. So, let's get this fixed. Where is it? Thank you. Come on, Azure Startup. This is my I mean, look, right? Let me get zoomed in on just my subscription. And then? And then we'll actually take a look at this. There we go. No. Um, because I'm working locally, I don't need to authenticate. Emulator default ports. Tables. Create table. Current subscriptions. Bang, there we go. Show me subscriptions. I need the family feud uh, uh, survey response, the ring. I also want the family feud buzzer when they get something wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I think I think we've almost got this. So let me restart this. It gets the current. It, I've got it. I've told it that. Why didn't I hear the end then sound? Oh no, we did. Um, I have it. I'm telling it to run that timer first thing when it starts up here. So it tries to get the current subscriptions and restart them. There it goes. Executed. Next five occurrences. There we go. Good. So it ran and didn't do anything. That's okay. Right? I mean, it shouldn't have done anything. Um, try putting that in the, the stream discord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. All right, I think 
I can deploy this now because it kind of works. Uh, oh no, it is. I didn't change anything. Hmm. But I will deploy this. Yeah. Should be able to do that. Right? Uh, my current subscription has... Let me show you what this is. So... I have a channel ID that we pass into this that specifies, right? And this is ends up being the key, the row key. There it is. Um, that says, here's the, um, the subscription that we need to be able to renew and when it expires. Um, and it should appropriately drop an entry in there. You know what? Let's make sure, let's make sure it does that properly with what we have over here. I have a, while you're, while that's starting up. Um, I'll put into the Twitch channel subscri subscription, I'll put the uh, my channel name, and it should create a subscription and drop an entry here in the current subscription box. Right? There it goes. So let me add a message called C Sharp Fritz. And this should pick up and run over here. There it goes. Executed subscribe, which means that in current subscriptions now, when I refresh, there it is. So for channel ID 96909659, which is me, um, this is going to expire on the 17th UTC. So 10 days out. Fantastic. Fantastic. It works. So. I don't have this entry in the production area. I'm going to need to migrate to generate an entry for it. Not terrible. Or I could just force a resubscription in my production area. So let me cancel this. Let me close this down. Good. And redeploy. Because I right-click publish here. Why do I right-click publish? Um, because... You can do it! So I do. It's easy like that. What do you think, chat room? Yeah, if there's things that we need to dig in a little bit further, putting things in Discord. If I can't answer it in a minute or two, um, dropping an entry in Discord is a great place to put it. So we can discuss as a group. See some images, some sample code. And there actually is a code review... Uh, reward that you can you can um, cash in for cash in your Fritz bits and we'll do a review together here on stream yeah there it is so deploying here we go I'm feeling good about this publish succeeded okay so now I have over here, there's my current subscriptions table, right? Um, I don't have a way to open that, do I? Hmm. So let me go into the queue and I'm gonna force this by adding a message for c -sharp Fritz. Go back over here, go down to tables. I thought there was a thing to open with... Uh, I don't want the premium experience. Punk. I'll tell you when I want a premium experience. Um, there was... A, ah, Storage Explorer. So now I can open that same Storage Explorer right here. And I want to see in the table, current subscriptions... I want to see it appear here when it starts up. Uh, da -da -da -da. We should see it run. Um, the other thing that I can do now is I have, if I go to, where is it? Stream management. 
there is a current webhook subscriptions endpoint that I can take a look at. So if I go into my function, I should be able to query that and see it. Come on, show me my list of functions. Show me the functions. Show me the functions. It's a thing. It works. Current webhook subscriptions. I want to be. I should be able to hit test and see it come back, and respond with what it is. Test. There we go. I'm going to do a get. Run. 500 internal server error. Oh, you know what? I'm missing. I'm missing a key. Um, I'm missing a key in my configuration. Pardon me for a second while I copy in a key here. Um, I'm going to take a look at my local settings. Yeah, I need my service bus connection string first. Da, 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 da. Let me add that setting. Pardon me, chat room. While I deploy some secrets. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. And save. All right. So I've got those settings, which should, uh, no, I hit save. Thank you. I should be able to go back into here now and test and see the results. So, um, well, thank you, Datsu123. I appreciate the kind words. So this is going to restart. I restarted the service effectively by changing those configuration settings. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to click into test here. I have a get. I want to be able to run. And there we go. So I have four subscriptions. Check this out. Be great if I could like get the JSON pretty printer to run on this. But no. No such luck. There we go. Uh yes, I'm going to open Notepad. Here we go. Um Fritz Twitch Archive receive for right, so this is for nine six, right? And these are test ones that I ran locally. So there it is. It's going to expire on uh, the 9th, right? That's, um, that's tomorrow. So let's try and force this to run again, right? So I'm going to go back over to, I'm going to go back over to my storage, drop a queue entry in there to tell it to go query, um, right? Add a message for me and eventually I'll do this with a thing with a uh, some sort of a web front end there we go so that's gone um, and if I go look at the tables um, oh no I can't look in the table All right, storage explorer so I can look in the table here there it is what do you mean there's no data what do you mean there's no data What happened? I know, I better re-up. You're right, the the leaf. The leaf, the leech. I can't read that. The leech. Ah, that's it. Um the purple and black here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Right, so let's take a look at this again. Run the test. Go. Of course it was called programmatically. I did it. Um, still set for the ninth, so it hasn't reset it yet. So what happened on uh, scheduled resubscribe? No, on subscribe, I want to monitor what happened. Something happened. Ooh, look at the errors. What happened? Um, binding parameters to complex objects uses what 
So it dequeued binding parameters to complex objects such as cloud queue message. Okay. But I didn't. This is on the subscribe. What do we do? Um, so, right queue trigger. Oh, it, all right. So I am binding to cloud queue message. Okay. Oh, wait a sec. But cloud queue message is just a string, right? Message as string. Yeah. Um. So, all right, what happened? Executed subscribe, failed. That's all you're telling me. That's all you're gonna tell me. What the heck? Um, you're just gonna tell me failed. Huh, huh, huh. huh. All right. Simplify that. So it didn't get, it didn't even get to here with that logging because here in these other ones that I've done in the past, subscribing to Twitch with payload, we didn't get to subscribing to Twitch with payload, right? And it's, yeah, wait a sec. Maybe if I just change this to string. Right, because I don't do anything else with that content. Let's see if we can get that working. Republish. I always test in production. That's right. Where'd it go? I've got it here. I always test in production. Where'd it go? can't find the no not that one because danger's my middle name that's the one I was looking for uh, da -da -da. gonna deploy we're gonna take a look see and figure out all right deployed publish succeeded go back over here to the Azure's the Azure's sure that's a thing um, what might be easy is for me to take this, take a look at the right subscription with this, go back up to the dashboard, it's uh, this one, this is on my Windows Azure MSDN, alright, so I can watch over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the storage explorer side by side with uh, with the function so I can see. And this is uh, right. no. I don't see it. This right here. Chat subscriptions, it's called. There it is. All right. So let me put this on this side. This over here. Go back to the functions. See what we can see here. There's my tables and my queues. Nothing in that right now. Current subscriptions. Nothing there. Check, here's what it's actually doing. It is logging chat, right? So everything that, that is typed in here is now being logged. You can see it's logged them quite effectively here for the past few days, and that's, that's pretty cool. Um, why did it log one for today? What is this? Shouldn't have done that yet. Let's see what's in this thing. Is this the one? 12? Yeah, this is today.
Yeah. Um, so that should end up getting overwritten when we finish the stream here. Um, so let's go over here to subscribe. Monitor so we can watch it. And actually, there not there, yeah, live metrics. Let's see what happens when we drop this in. We should be able to watch it happen. Yeah, look at this. Something's getting cranky here. Uh, well, okay, that's the old values. That's the old things. So I can hit this live app metrics, and it'll show me all the log information as it comes through. Right, I don't care about the actual dashboard. Sure, whatever. But here's the telemetry as it's coming out. It's pulling for the subscriptions. So let's let's give it a subscription to load. So I'm going to add a message. Go. So it, it's pulling. It should... There it is. Executed. Succeeded. And it, it got subscribed. Look at that. Receive end of stream because it did the validation. So I should be able to go over here. There it is. There's the subscription. And right. So it, it's saying it's going to expire on the 17th. And if I go over and look at current webhook subscriptions. And I want to be able to test this. Right, so let me scroll over here, scroll down, click the run, and I'll get my output. Hey there, friends. Thank you for the follow. Uh, it, that's probably enough. Um, <laughs> nope, let me... There we go. Uh, there it is. Fritz Twitch Chat Archive 1218. Yeah. And I, I I have that for 1218 and the value that I saved is 1217 so that it'll do the resubscription a day early. We got it! We got it, chat room! It's doing the thing! It, it's, it's, um... It's alive! Well, yeah, it's, it's that too, sure. Um, but, uh... Okay. So now it's going to properly retrieve chat and resubscribe and continue the subscription for that webhook. Not a Twitch subscription, but a webhook subscription to make sure that we're constantly getting feedback for this channel as it goes along. And the idea then would be I could add other channels in there and be able to grab their chat log and generate some search indexing and stuff so that we can go back and search and find here are the things that we worked on here are the things we talked about on stream subscriptions everywhere that's right johan there there, there are all Wait, these let things let me explain something to you um we're going to use that webhook subscription that one webhook subscription though to fan out and do a bunch of other things um right so right now um I've put the download chat interaction over here in this download class. And you can find this. The You can find this in the, um, if you're on the project command, the, you'll get the link to the GitHub repository. Um, but I also have code that will download the video for this and save it into Azure Storage. The video is kind of big, so I don't want it to stay in Azure Storage all the time because... Jeez, it's going to take up a, a, a ton of space and, and just be a mess to manage. So um, what we'll do is we'll copy it down there, use it to start off some uh, uh, trans speech transcription, some other analytics around the video, and uh, maybe even grab some screenshots and finally upload it automatically to YouTube and we'll do all those all those things automatically based off of receiving a service bus trigger that hey this thing happened 
and we'll be able to go do it. Um, I'm not going to get into Blazor. We're almost out of time here together. So let me show you what I have for that Twitch video interaction. I'm going to close this one. I don't need that. I know that works. Um, there's my family feud stuff that I need. I, I need that. I need my family feud data. Close that. Um, didn't, didn't I have a folder open? No. I've already got a thing here to download video. Where is it? Twitch video automation. Yes. And I started working on chat download over here, but I got it working in our project better. So this in the elegantly named function one um, receives a request uh, da, da, here it is download video <clears throat> so we give it a download video link download video queue and um, gets a client ID goes and gets the token for the Twitch video and starts downloading it. Downloads all the chunks of the video and then assembles those chunks of video. Check all chunks downloaded and yes, get the chunks and uh, merges it all together as one video file, as one MP4 out on the service. How's that? That's pretty cool. So here's... Functions make your heart happy, says Bald Bearded Builder. Oh, cool. I'm glad you approve. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this class that does this, and I'm going to bring this in to do the download video interaction. Um, I'm not quite sure what this first one was meant to do, but hey, whatever. Because this is absolutely something that I want it to do um, and we'll call this download video and we'll end up putting the same type of um, service bus trigger on this right so that service bus it, it's a subscription it's an endpoint that we're going to connect to and listen for when the event happens that the uh, That the um, that the stream is over and to go download video, so I have right. I've got um, a couple different queues and blobs that we're gonna have out here. Um, fix name violation. No, it's not a. You're a name violation. Uh, give me some using statements here. Get me. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And. Yep, that's good too. Don't you know what authorization level is? Yep. And HTTP request. Yep, that's a thing. iLogger, we need one of those. Stream reader, this is system IO. JSON convert. Nice. All right, what don't you like about download video? Member names not, cannot be the same. Fine. Um, let's call this get video. Ha! J object, that's a thing like this. Cloud storage account, look at that. Cosmos. Okay, why don't you know what count is? So we don't have that. This... Should have, uh, uh oh. For each, add a new cloud queue message. So we need an output queue to put these on. Create cloud queue client. Why doesn't it know what that is? What is the font name? Um, this one. I believe this is Cascadia code on this machine. Yeah. This is Cascadia code. Um, Where the docs go? I had that open here. 
Cascadia code. This is a new code, open source code, that uh, the folks at Microsoft wrote to make the terminal, the new Windows terminal, better. Thank you for the follow. Empowering Arts. I appreciate you joining us. Um, there you go. There's the link. If you want to get your copy and install it. Um, this feels weird. Why is it not? Cloud storage account does not contain a reference to create cloud queue client. Hmm. Jumper LOL. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. We're getting closer and closer to our next giveaway. I have a giveaway that we're sending out. I We gave away a backpack for crossing 9,000. When we cross 9,500, I have another giveaway we'll do. Um, I've got a code par autographed code party hat that we can send out to to a lucky viewer. Um, but every time we cross a multiple of 100 followers, I give away a set of stickers. Um, so I have, I have some stickers. I have a backpack that we're going to be sending out to folks that have already won over the last week or so. And uh, I send those to anywhere in the world. When we hit 10,000 followers, we are going to have a 12-hour party. We're going to have guests on. We're going to have a 12-hour stream talking about technology and having a good time together learning and building some software. So look forward to that. If current trends hold, this will probably be mid to late January because we're hitting about 100 followers um, every day or two. Maybe three three four days depends but we're going to be streaming just about every every um the five days a week heading right up to uh the new year here i'm not sure why i'm not getting that create cloud queue client working and really i should have another queue here that we're going to output to so i don't have to create another queue client i can just say here's the queue i'm going to write to add a new message you know um, and check out how I'm using a parallel for each here. So I'm just outputting lots and lots of queue items there. Go, go do these things. And create a cloud blob client, right? Why doesn't it know how to do that? It's like cloud... Oh. Oh. It's because the cloud storage account it's using there is the um, Cosmos one. Let me get rid of that. Right? It's kind of confused. Let me go down, back down here. So, cloud storage account, if I... Yeah, look at this. Uh -oh. If I do Windows Azure Storage, then this is that. Oh, I don't have the markers in the gutter here to help me out. What do you mean you don't know what a new HTTP client is? Sure, create one of those. This might be something we can clean up as well. Um going to need to change that so it's going to the right storage location which is now this right that's a thing um cloud storage account parse get environment variable i've you can see there i did some of these in some using an older technique i feel like we can simplify a lot of this blob continuation token why don't you know what that is? I think I need to do that one. Good. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Where's it getting client ID? Calculate the MD5 hash. And, I, and I'm calculating the MD5 hash here. Check this out. This is kind of neat. Um... Right, this is where I'm assembling the video chunks. Uh, <clears throat> um, why am I calculating that again? There's a reason that I'm doing this. Check that they're all done. Get the chunks. There's a, where is it? Assemble. So after it's done, I'm grabbing the MD5 for something. No, that was in the assemble. Why am I calculating? Oh, because I have to put a, a hash with a, when I put a block up there. Um, did I already know that Windows subsystem for Linux 2 is already in the Slow Insiders build? That's pretty cool. All right. 
You're just getting started with C-sharp and Unity 3D. I heard that using VAR is not as efficient as declaring the straight type way. Wrong. Empowering arts. Using VAR is a bit of, we call it syntactic sugar. Um, it's a simplification that's only used at compile time. So it's once once it compiles, that VAR goes away and it's replaced with the, the real type. It's just a shortcut for you as a human to be able to read and write code faster. The compiler replaces that very quickly. Um, don't let anybody tell you in C sharp where these are static typed that var is slower. Var is not slower. Um, they're lying. Um, okay. So do I have everything here? Oh, my connections here. All right, let me connections. And I'm going to need to go through, right? Like these things where it's get the, getting the client ID, I need to change how this is working. There we go. So that instead of getting an environment variable, I'm actually, right? Yeah. I'm going to, I want to pass those in and I'll refactor and do that. Um, to make this a little bit easier to interact with. Um, Landmark249, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Let me see what's going on here. You know what? Yeah, I thought it was about time to wrap up here. Or it's, um, let me call it here. I'm going to check this in. It's not quite ready for prime time, but that's okay. Right, let me just take a quick look. What were the two files that I changed? Um, so let's commit, um, starting to fan out to download video also. We didn't get to the blazer today. That's okay. This is important that we got this working. There it goes. And we'll, uh, we'll continue pushing on this and we'll do some more cool things with it next time. We'll we'll get back into the Blazor application. This we're gonna I'm gonna park and we'll get back into the Blazor application. But thank you so much everybody for joining me. This was a lot of fun. I, I appreciate the feedback and the questions that we had throughout the stream today. All of our new subs, our cheers that we had today. That was really great. We're gonna make some really good donations to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, yes, that is Git in PowerShell. Fixter Jake. Hello, hello. We're about to set up our Sunday morning raid. You know who we raid on Sunday mornings. We want to keep things going here with the Live Coders team. Click through if you're if you're a subscriber. Copy that top that top line out of uh, that the bot copied there. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Copy the second line. We're gonna raid our good friend Noop Cat. All right, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. This video, like all my other videos, will be available over on the YouTube channel within a week or so. Um, and uh, I hope you check us out over there as well. Get ready to say hello to our friend, Noop Cat. It's always a pleasure to see her on, uh, on a Sunday morning. All right? Have a good one. Write some good code. And I will see you on Tuesday. All right? Take care.